It's true, not all chemicals are bad, but toxic metals like lead and mercury are found in all of us. So are persistent toxins like PCBs and endocrine disruptors such as bisphenol A and flame retardants. We've been studying the impact of toxins on children for the past 30 years and reached the inescapable conclusion, little things matter. Toxins can have a lifelong impact on children. We've also discovered that extremely low levels of toxins can impact brain development. Let's take a look at the percent of children who are exposed to some of these toxins using a national study in the United States. To keep it simple, we'll use 100 children to represent all children. Mercury is found in 89% of children, primarily from eating large fish contaminated by pollution. Lead is detected in the blood of all children, regardless of race, income, or where they live. Over 80% of children are exposed to organophosphate pesticides, mostly from food. All children are exposed to PCBs, a persistent pollutant that was banned in the 70s but will linger for generations. Bisphenol A, or BPA, is found in 96% of children. PBDEs, a type of flame retardant, are found in 100% of children. But these toxins don't occur in isolation. Children are exposed to many toxins and dozens of untested chemicals all the time. Let's take a look at the body burden of a typical child, one toxin at a time. If each marble represents one part per billion of a toxin, this figure represents the body burden of a typical child. One part per billion is deceptively small. It is only about two tablespoons of sugar in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. But chemicals can be biologically active, even at very low levels. The chemical industry has tried to assure us that concentrations of these toxins are too small to cause harm. But chemicals designed by drug companies to alter behavior, like the prescribed dose of Ritalin, a drug commonly used to treat children with ADHD, is active at levels about the same or even lower than toxins found in the blood. Besides, a lot of studies have shown that some chemicals can be toxic, even at very low levels. As the body burden of PBDEs in pregnant women increases, the intellectual ability of their children decreases. Let's take a closer look. As the level of PBDEs in mother's blood increases from 10 to 100 parts per billion, the IQ scores of their children drop by about five points. We see a similar pattern with organophosphate pesticides. As the level of organophosphate pesticides in pregnant women increases from 10 to 75 parts per billion, the IQ scores of their children drop by about five points. In the 1960s, hundreds of children died from severe lead poisoning every summer. Since then, much lower levels of exposure have been shown to result in learning deficits and brain disorders like ADHD. In fact, the World Health Organization and other agencies agree there is no safe level of lead exposure. As the level of lead in children's blood increases from zero to 100 parts per billion, IQ scores drop by about six points. In contrast, an increase from 100 to 200 parts per billion results in an IQ drop of two more points. An increase from 200 to 300 parts per billion results in an IQ drop of another point. The impact of toxins on the developing brain is permanent. Children who are more heavily exposed to toxins won't reach the same peak cognitive ability as those who have lower exposures. These studies show that there is no safe level of exposure. They also indicate that the way we regulate toxins, which assumes there is a safe level, fails to protect children. The chemical industry argues that the effect of toxins on children is subtle and of little consequence. But that's misleading. Little shifts in children's IQ scores have a big impact on the number of children who are challenged or gifted. Let's go back to our original sample of 100 children and look at a typical distribution of IQ scores. Most of us have IQ scores that fall between 85 and 115 points. Only 2.5% of children have an IQ above 130, which is considered gifted. There are about 6 million children in this group. On the other end of the distribution, another 2.5% of children have an IQ below 70, which is considered challenged. The impact of exposure to a toxin like lead causes a five-point drop in IQ. This shift results in a 57% increase in the number of children that are challenged, from 6 million to 9.4 million. There is a corresponding decrease in the number of children that are gifted, from 6 million to 2.4 million. Little shifts matter. The impact of exposure to another toxin, like flame retardants, 
results in a further increase in the number of children who are challenged, from 9.4 million to over 11 million. There is a further decrease in the number of gifted children. Although many, or even most, chemicals are harmless, the cumulative impact of exposures to three or four toxins is overwhelming to imagine. In Canada and the United States, chemicals are used in consumer products and released into the environment before they are tested for toxic effects. By allowing children to be exposed to toxins or chemicals of unknown toxicity, we are unwittingly using our children as part of a massive experiment. But it doesn't have to be this way. Like the European Union, we could require industry to prove that the chemicals they use aren't toxic before they enter the market. How can we avoid exposures to toxins or chemicals of unknown toxicity? The ultimate solution is to revise how we regulate chemicals. Consider writing a letter to your government representative and urge them to require industry to test their products before they are put on the market. There are a few simple ways you can reduce your child's exposure to toxins. Eat fresh or frozen foods. If possible, choose organic. Try to avoid canned foods and steer clear of heavily processed foods. If you are pregnant or planning to become pregnant, eat fish low in mercury. Don't use pesticides in and around your home. Check your home for lead hazards, especially if it was built before 1960. Frequent cleaning of floors and surfaces can help reduce children's exposures to lead, flame retardants, and other toxins in house dust.